What it do, what it do, everyone. I know it's been a while. Happy New Year to everyone. Have a, hoping, hoping you guys are having a good year so far with the whole capital and all that bull stuff, you know. Yeah, you know what? Let's talk about something a little bit way more positive. Uh, I'm going to just throw out a few random ideas that I had that um, relates to One Piece. Um, pretty much uh, like Luffy's Dream, obviously, you know, everybody knows the whole Pirate King thing. And also I have like, an idea about shanks and you know just just humor me a little bit i know it's like still a little rough but um the luffy idea i'm gonna get straight to it it's straightforward um everybody knows that luffy wants to be king of the pirates but they're also suspecting that there's like a um a secondary dream of luffy's like well obviously like main dream well because the um, reason why a lot of people um well i should say how people came up with this idea in the flashback where ace was talking to the model saying, you know, this is my brother's dream. Like Ace said what Luffy's dream was, but then and like really, you know, they oh they kept it shrouded. And he said, they you know, if you laugh at my brother's dream, me and Sabo will come after you and we'll get you. And pretty much the same thing happened with Gold Roger when he said his dream and White Bear laughed and Oda was shocked. And I know this is gonna sound crazy as hell, it's gonna sound far fetched as hell. A lot of people was thinking like Luffy wants like this ultimate freedom. And he just wants to, you know, just be him. But the reason why I don't think that's Luffy's dream, because l- l- let's look at how, let's look at Luffy's character, right? What Oda, Oda May, right? Yeah, shit looking crazy. Sorry. Uh, what Oda May, right? Luffy's a rubber band man, right? He's very flexible. Physically, he's physically f- flexible. His body doesn't really take any stress, any kind of blunt force trauma, whatever. Bounces back, bullets, this, that, whatever, right? So, Physically, Luffy's flexible. We all know Luffy's pretty dumb, right? He's battle savvy. He's battle smart. But when it comes to, like, planet and things like that, we always see, like, Luffy will have, like, a little ellipsis, and he's kind of, like, sitting there, like, lost. Or you see him, like, the whole gone thing with his brain is, like, frying. So he has the smoke on his head. So, like, he, he's an airhead. So his mind is free, right? What's something that Luffy will want that's so Luffy, that's his character, that a lot of people will be like, that makes sense. If we go back to when he was doing the um the cups with the with the straw hat Grand Fleet, what was like one of the main things that Luffy wanted? Like that he everybody else like, you know, we're gonna call you boss. He said, Wait, Luffy, I don't care nothing about that. Food. Let me explain. Now me thinking about how Luffy's character is, right? I think in Luffy's head, being the king of all pirates. You get the biggest piece of meat. For some of you guys, pause, because I know it's going to sound crazy, but pause. Think about it. His crew been traveling around all this time, right? They don't fight for treasure. They don't um, secure land. They're not conquering people. This that, they help people out. But after every like major arc with One Piece, you always see everyone drinking, the party, foods, all that good stuff. So I'm thinking Luffy feels, if you're king of all pirates, you get like the biggest food, meat, things like that. And I'm just sitting back because it just dawned on me one day because uh, me and my boy Marquise was talking about it. And I'm sitting back like, what do Luffy really want? And I'm just like, I don't mean he wants his food. I hear a lot of people saying that he wants like freedom. He doesn't want treasure. And and to me, it kind of makes sense because, you know, Go Watch says, I left everything I own, you know, fame, fortune, treasure. It's all yours. I have everything in one piece. Luffy don't care about none of that stuff. So if if that's what Gold Rogers left behind, right? And Luffy knows that's all there is. He doesn't care about treasure. He doesn't rob people. He doesn't acquire anything. He he acquired, you know, new friends, new followers, and things like that. So I'm just saying, like, what is it that Luffy really wants? Because he has all the freedom in the world. He doesn't listen to anyone. Garp wanted him to be a Marine, and he didn't listen to Garp. Like, they told him he wouldn't be able to escape Impel Down. He escaped that. They told him that Sky Island, Sky Pier was fake. He wouldn't be able to get to there. He got there. Um, They said that he wouldn't go to the real cool kingdom where um, the fishmen are at. He got there. They t- Holy Jones was saying to him, there's no way you could beat me underwater because I'm a fishman. Fishman are like X amount of time stronger than humans. He did that. Everything that people said Luffy wouldn't be able to accomplish, Luffy accomplished. So just by him accomplish everything that's supposedly like impossible that to me 
is his freedom. So here we have his freedom. So what is it that Luffy wants that when he mentions it, it's the words is off screen, right? But people are looking like, what? You have one person who's like, you're a dumbass. And there's always somebody else in the corner just laughing. So I'm sitting back like, Monkey, Monkey D. Luffy, what the hell do you want? Food. And then thinking back to how Oda is... Um, a fan of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z Saga, you know, Toriyama fan. I'm like, well, Luffy's kind of like loosely based off of Goku. Goku's based off of Journey to the West, Son Goku. And I'm like, Son Goku was like monkey-like, child-like, powerful as hell. Had so much power that the gods say he's going to destroy heaven and earth. So I was like, but every incarnation of Goku I see in any anime or every in any story, he always is like a big eater. And I'm sitting back like, Luffy, Goku, big eater, monkey like, child like, have powers to even rival the gods. This is Journey to the West. He wants food. So that's something that got me thinking about the food. Now, the next, um, and like I said, like, comment, subscribe, all that at the bottom. Let me know what you guys think about this theory. The next idea, because like I said, these are short theories, so that's I'm kind of putting together. The next um, idea I want to throw in here is Shanks, right? And when I, when I guess I'm trying, I'm trying to figure like an intro to, to segue to that, his relationship with Mihawk, and this is going to sound crazy, I think Mihawk influenced or helped made Shanks a Yonko. And the reason why I say that, I say this, because when they disbanded the um, Warlords um, system, the, the Marine and the government, they said a few of the people's um, bounties, but they didn't say Mihawk's bounty, right? Now, White Bear said that the fight between Shanks and Mihawk was legendary. So he remembered those fights and anything like that. So to the point where White Bear was saying, like, yo, these fights are great. Now, we know these fights was bef- hadn't been before Luffy um, acquired his little fruit. So this is probably about 11 years ago in um, the One Piece storyline. I mean, Luffy's 19, and I think he got his little fruit when he was, like, 8, right? Yeah, so that's, like, 11 years, right? So, if Shanks is, like, 39 years old, so this is when Shanks was, let's say, like, 25, let's say, like, 20 to 25, Helmut Shanks had, like, these great battles, these great fights and stuff like that, right? So, where even a Yonko of White Bear's caliber was like, yo, there's some great fights. But you say, like, okay, we all know the story. It gets to the part where how Mihawk made Shanks or helped Shanks become a Yonko. Now, if I remember right, Shanks lost his left arm, Right? To see King, we help save Luffy, or when he I should say he saved Luffy and everything like that, right? But what happened if that was his dominant hand? What happened if Shanks was left handed, and that was a hand that he used to fight Mihawk? Like that was like his, you know, his dueling arm, let's say, like his left arm was his dueling arm. And because he knew his former glory, he knew how strong he was and everything, because he was desperate to get stronger, I think that bloomed his hockey. And because that bloomed his hockey and everything, that's what made his because I because my my um my idea like my head can is each Yonko um specializing in like a, in a different thing like Black Bear is gonna be like a jack of all trades he's gonna have multiple fruits that's gonna be like you know the low gear permetia and um zone type like that's that's what I think um Black Bear's thing is um Kyle Sorcy he he has a very powerful zone fruit Big Mom has a very powerful um permetia type fruit. But Shanks is going to be the guy who um, specialized in hockey. So his hockey is going to be next level. So I'm thinking that because he sat down and he was desperate to get back to his former glory. He did so much training. He pushed himself because of like, the, the stress and all that. It, it it just opened up another layer. And then his concrete hockey went to the next level. His um, observation hockey went to the next level. I believe his um, arm and hockey went to the next level. I think because he lost his arm and now he's fighting with his weakened arm. And the reason why, like, I think, like, another piece of evidence I had that kind of leads credence to this is um, when he met up with White Bear. Him and White Bear had that that, that clash. Now, a lot of people are going to be thinking, well, it can't be his weak arm because him and White Bear clashed and they were not equal, but they was, like, on par with each other. But you got to think about this. This was a sickly White Bear swinging at Shanks. So, if Shanks is fight pretty much with his weaker arm, you know, his non-dominant arm, it would make sense that he will be able to clash with the world's strongest man with one arm, because you gotta look, you gotta think about this, it's a whole sword, one arm going against 
a glaive, a, a staff weapon, and White Bear is pretty much swinging. I'm not gonna say all his might, but he's swinging with a significant amount of force. So that makes me think that that Shanks really is using his weaker arm because we see Zoro. Zoro draws from his uh, right side, and traditions like with samurais and everything, they usually have their sword on the left side because you know they believe you you draw from your right. So I'm because even like, there's one thing I noticed about One Piece, like um, Zoro is backwards, and I'm thinking about it, like, wait a minute, Shanks also, Shanks also. Um, lost his left arm. So, Wormley, that's his dominant arm. And also, we got to take into effect and account that um, Oda, when he was younger, he helped, I think he helped, or he's like an assistant to the mangaka who did um, Rooney Kenshin. And if I remember right, there was a guy named, I believe it was Hanzo. Hanzo was a guy who, um, when he went to challenge Kenshin to a fight, he hit Karu with like a um i guess like a warrior spirit i, I forgot exactly what it it's been years since i read it or even um watched anime but pretty much he here with almost like a conqueror's hockey where she wouldn't breathe where she couldn't breathe and he's saying can't you like you have to defeat me if you don't defeat me she's gonna suffocate and me seeing that or not see that but, but me thinking about that i'm like that's something like conqueror's hockey to me to where the point where your warrior spirit your power you know your um Hockey, your your will is so strong that you stop somebody from breathing, and that makes sense to me. In one piece, where somebody's conquerors hockey could make these people pass out because somebody choke you out, you pass out. And then think about the whole situation with Carl. Where is so? If Oda took like that one aspect of that source material and used that to make conquerors hockey, it will make sense that Shanks being um. I guess this, I, I, I'll say for a better lack of terminology, like disabled, and him training to work on his weaker arm, that forced him to bloom. Because it's like if you think about people who um who like become paralyzed and you know like from the waist down, and because like they're in a wheelchair, they tend to be like um you know strong upper body and things like that. Or a person who just become blind, they say like when, when you lose like one sight, your other sights or your other senses become more heightened. So I'm I'm sitting back thinking like, what happened if Mihawk was like the let's say catalyst. He's like the catalyst to help Shanks become who he is now. Because Mihawk, because I, I think uh, in one of the episodes, and like I said I, I don't know what episode it was, but I think it's like around like chapter ninety six when they met up with he was talking to Shanks about Luffy. So I don't know what episode that is in the anime, but um, Shanks was pretty much said something like I'm not in a good mood, and he and then Mihawk replied back like. I'm not here to do like a wounded man or like pretty much like a, a broken man saying about the whole one arm thing. But if you look at the timeline, Shanks been a Yonko for about six years, right? When he helped Luffy at the time of the seeking, when he saved Luffy, that was 11 years ago. So from the time of him losing his arm to six years ago, his power jumped dramatically to the point where he's able to rival the other Yonko to the point where I don't think White Bear would challenge him so much, but like think about Big Mom and Kaido where Shakes have a small crew and they didn't want to attack him or conquer him or anything like that. He was able to make his own territory. And he has like a crew of like what, ten people at most? So it's like if he has a crew of ten, right? And he's able to establish himself that dominantly in such a short amount of time. I'm thinking from the time of him saving Luffy, because we already seen he had um, showcased a little bit King's Hockey or Congress, King's Hockey, Congress, whatever you want to call it, when he, went, when he um, scared the Sea King away. So I'm thinking that time that he saved Luffy in those five years, because he wanted to get back to his former self, because he knew, like, you know, like, I'm at a disadvantage now, and then, like, my rival, if he wanted to, you know, duel me, I can't duel because I lost my, my, my dominant arm. To me, it makes sense that. Those five years, it helped him bloom all types of hockey. So that's 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 like the ideas I had. Um, uh, this video is long enough; it's almost fifteen minutes. Wow. Okay, I thought it was gonna be a lot shorter, but it's almost fifteen minutes. So like, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna um, end it here. Um, guys, let me know what you think about the ideas I, I'm I'm bringing to the table. Uh, if you guys add to it, do you have any um, ideas of your own that disprove it? 
Um, like I said, let's just have a conversation. This is um Star Maru seven one eight. Hopefully you guys are doing good. Be safe out there and like Yeah, man. Shit's crazy out there, man. Later guys.